All right, today we got a uh, 2011 Dodge Ram in the shop. We're doing an evaporator core on this particular one. Um, it came to us and it had warm AC. So we tried to recharge it using the machine. And uh, of course, after recharging it, it was cold for a few minutes and uh, we quickly found a leak. This one was leaking free on out of the evaporator so bad that it was coming out of the AC drain and dripping right down the frame rail onto the ground. Um, so we knew we had a serious leak from the evaporator core. Um, so we're going to do that job today. So what you're going to do first, you're going to start under the hood. Um, you're going to take off your air box here, remove this hose, um, and remove your engine cover. It just makes it a lot easier to get access into the back where your heater hoses are at. Um, what you're going to be disconnecting is going to be your refrigerant lines, which are right here with a nut in the center. And then you're also going to be disconnecting your heater core lines which are back here. Let's see if I can get a light to it. Right up there. Um, so those are a little hard to get to. We're going to take off the cover and some other things to try to access those. Um, and we'll go from there. All right, now on the inside of the vehicle, what you're going to do here is you're going to have to remove your A-pillars on both sides. It's going to be the top A-pillar the side cover as well as the lower sections right here that just kind of snap in. Um, up at the top here you're going to have two little flip panels. You just pop those out with a pick or flathead um, and you're going to have a screw behind those. Take out those two screws and pull down your top A-pillar handle um, as well as popping out this panel here and the lower those should just pop right off. And you're going to do that on the passenger and the driver side. All right, so we're a little bit further along on the inside. I wanted to give a little update video. Um, so with this one, you've already got your A-pillars out uh, on both sides. You should have these trim panels pulled on both sides, and then you're gonna have a plug here. This one goes up to your headliner. So you're gonna wanna pull out both of those clips from the holes that they go into, as well as disconnect the connector. Um, this is the one, as you can see, goes up into the A-pillar for the headliner. So just set that aside, make sure it's out of the way. Then underneath, you're going to have a few more connectors. Get some light going in here. Oh, well, we got no light. So one second here. Alright, so you've got a big bulkhead connector right here next to the brake pedal. Just behind the brake pedal here, you've got a big bulkhead connector. That one will need to come in unplugged. Both of these will come unplugged that are next to it as well. You can see those up there. Um, you're also going to have to disconnect your parking brake right here from the back of the handle. Then the steering column. Um, so I've already got the steering column dropped. I just wanted to show exactly how it's done. Um, so what you're going to do on the steering column is you're going to take first the, uh, the coverings off of it, the plastic covering from top and bottom. And the way you do that is with the torque screws on the bottom, there's going to be three torque screws. Two, um, two are going to be towards the front area just behind the steering wheel and one in the center towards the rear. Um, so once you pull those three torx bolts, you can remove the panels. And then you'll be able to disconnect all the connectors that go up to here. Um, just carefully remove each one from where they go. You might want to take some pictures of this with your phone before you do it just to make sure you know what goes back where. Um, and then you're also going to have little clips where they tie into these holes and hold it in place. You want the whole harness disconnected from the steering column completely. Um, so remove all of the electrical first. Then to actually remove the steering column, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here to where it connects to the actual 
the actual steering shaft right here. Um, and what you're going to do is remove the nut that goes through there. There's a bolt. I'm sorry, a bolt that goes straight through. It's a 13 millimeter. I have trouble with my light here. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry, I know it's a little dark, but you're gonna have a 13 millimeter bolt that goes through there, hold your steering shaft in place, remove that bolt completely. Um, you can't just loosen it because the shaft won't come out. If it's just loose, it has to come out completely. So take that bolt out completely. Then you're gonna have four bolts that attach your steering column to the dash. And you can see uh, right there, there four big 13 millimeter nuts that hold it up into place. Um, so take those four out and the whole steering column will drop and you can remove it from the car completely. Just make sure that when you uh, remove the steering column, don't let the wheel turn one way or another. If it goes too far, it can break your clock spring. So you wanna make sure that the steering wheel does not turn while it's disconnected from everything. So make sure the whole assembly stays in position. Just remove it from the vehicle, set it somewhere safe, don't let it roll around. All right, so real quick, I wanna show you the mounting bolts that hold the whole instrument panel in the truck. Um, so you're gonna have three on this side, 13 mil bolts, one, two, three. Then up top, you're gonna to have two what are called fence line bolts. They are under covers right here. Um, and basically you pop them out, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's kind of at a forward angle right behind both of these. There's one on each side, one on the driver, one on the passenger. Then if you come inside the truck after you've removed the console, there's going to be two bolts down here on the very bottom, one in the front, and one on the driver and one on the passenger side. Uh, those two are 10 mil bolts, 10 millimeter. Go ahead and pull those off as well. Now I had to remove the driver's seat and here's why. I wasn't sure if this was going to be necessary, but it is. Uh, you really do have to remove the seat to be able to get this harness undone. Um, so when you go to remove the dash, you might miss this. So take a look at this harness right here uh, it goes underneath this and it goes right under the carpet right there so you really only see part of it um, this whole harness is connected up into the dash and there's no way to disconnect it on the dash side so it has to be connected uh, disconnected on the console side um, so basically underneath the carpet the wire lays just like this uh, it has one place where it's held down right here under the carpet another one here another one here and then you've got a couple over here, little holds that go over bolts. Um, this will plug in right there. Um, and that's the cord that goes up to there. So to get that out, you've basically got to disconnect it right here. Um, and then you've got to lift up the carpet, take off some of this. Um, but the only way I could pull the whole harness out and get it out completely was to remove the driver's seat and actually pull this carpet all the way back. I basically reached under the carpet from the front side from this direction and was able to get to the harness, pop up the little clips and pull this, basically pull this harness out from underneath, out from underneath the carpet because um, that's got to come out with the dash itself with the instrument panel. Um, same thing on the passenger side, you're going to have three bolts except for one of them is going this direction. Um, so you'll do that one from the bottom. You also want to make sure that you disconnect your parking brake cable because um, that is connected to the truck as well. Um, the lower panel, I didn't disconnect the hood latch. I just left it connected to the plastic panel and dropped it to the bottom and out of the way. Um, this little clip right here was kind of a pain too. Um, this is actually for your shifter. 
Um, it goes up under the console over here and goes just about like this um, and it hooks onto your shift lever. Now the way that this comes off is it has a little clip here on the side. I don't know if, yeah, you can kind of see that here. See how that hit clip hinges? So if you pull that clip back just like so, you can pull the whole assembly out and remove the whole piece. This top piece just pops off of the metal shaft that it's onto and you can remove that whole thing. Just kind of leave it laying there and out of the way. But at that point, if you've got everything disconnected um, under the dash here, all of those bolts taken out, um, you're basically ready to remove the dash as a complete assembly. And we'll go from there. So here's what the interior is going to look like after you pull the entire dash, instrument panel, the HVAC box, the center console, and the driver's seat. The only thing that you don't have to pull is what's called the brake sled. And that's this entire portion here. Um, that all stays. There are just two bolts from the very bottom that go up into the instrument panel that you do have to remove. All of those pieces stay with the firewall. So here's the new EVAP core sitting in the box. Um, make sure you take your old expansion valve off and reattach it to the um, to the EVAP core. Or better yet, just go ahead and get a new expansion valve. Um, probably good to go ahead and replace that as well while you're in there. Um, but then the box just reattaches to this section here. Um, there's a couple of screws uh, around here and there. Hold everything together as well as a couple clips. Um, and that's about it. You can see here on the old one, it was definitely leaking. See, probably about here is where it was leaking from the most, but there's stuff all around it. So definitely trying time to change that one. Should look like this.
All right, so once you've got the dash and the HVAC box all back in, um, you're going to want to come back under here, of course, and reconnect your refrigerant lines as well as your heater hose lines. Um, get all that reconnected. Um, you might want to go ahead and get the PCM back into position. There's one nut that's behind here, so you probably had to remove that in order to get to that nut. So put that all back together. Um, and once all that's back done, um, I go ahead and pull a vacuum on it. Usually do a 30 minute vacuum pull, make sure that everything is uh, good and sealed, that there's no leaks. Um, and once that's all done, as long as there's no leaks and it's all good, I will go ahead and charge the system. Alright, and that's it. It's fully back together.